Hi guys, my name is Helge Maus from Pixel Train. I hope you enjoyed your holidays and in this first tutorial after my holiday, I want to talk about the new version of Blender, Blender 2.9. It's a new feature tutorial, but instead of making only a list of all the new features which are there, I want to focus more on efficiency for you as a 3D artist. I found in my 20 years of experience working with software and software manufacturers, most customers only focus on the big new features, what you now can do, the big dynamics feature or whatever, but they forget all the small nitty gritty things which the developers add for your convenience so that you can work more effective or a software behaves more like expected. And Blender 2.9 has really great new features, which I will tell you a little bit about, but I also want to show you the small nitty gritty things. And in this first tutorial, I want to talk about the UI and yeah, let's get started. So we are welcomed again with this wonderful splash screen. This time it's from Daniel Beistad, this wonderful fox. And if you're interested in this file, it's on the release notes page. So you can download it and you can dissect it and understand how Daniel has made this great image. So let's start with the release notes. So if you have the splash screen opened, if you have clicked it away, like most people do all the time. Uh, you can go here to this little blender icon here. You can open the splash screen again. And here we have the release notes. And if you click here, you see this wonderful new page here for Blender 2.9 here. This time we have a little feature reel, which I like a lot. And here you see this here is the Fox blend file from Daniel. And if you now scroll down, you see all the big new features, which I will tell you a little bit about. But you see now the Blender Foundation makes really a good effort also to present the work they do and all the developers to present you with this nice page. So this is a first start here to think a little bit about the new features. And what we now want to do is we want to jump now directly into Blender 2.9 to find some new UI improvements. The layout of Blender is again more compact and more user friendly. What do I mean with that? If you go here, for example, in a drop down like this here, the transform drop down, you see now that this dialog here is much more compact. You see in the older version, we had much more space here and now everything is where it belongs. So the text and the checkboxes are more close to each other. We don't use empty lines and so on. So this here is much more compact. Another example where you find something like that. So I select the cube here and go here to the object data properties, for example. And here are, yeah, here are the normals where you normally activate the auto normals. You see now instead of auto smooth in one line and then in the next line, this field, everything is now one line. So a small feature, but I like it a lot. Another really small feature, but it's cool. I activate here the auto smooth and this here is a text slider. So you normally can use it as a slider or you can click in it and change something here. For example, I type in something now. If you are now in this local mode, so you are in a text field, you now can use command Z here on a local state. And this is really useful if you start changing parameters here. You see, you can go back also in the field and also outside if you like. Nice thing. Another thing which I like is the bigger hit area. I resize here my windows all the time. And if you are used to work with the tablet, these areas here were really small and yeah, you had to be really precise. Now these hit areas are much broader or wider and now you can grab them much easier. Another really nice features are inside of the outliner, but for this I have to fill a little bit my outliner. So I press shift D to copy here some cubes around to have some more objects here. And now I make this outliner smaller. You know that you can scroll here in this list with your mouse wheel, but really often if you are importing cat data, for example, you have to sort your lists. And in most cases, I have two outliners open at the same time to drag from one outliner and another. But if you want to sort something into a collection, for example, and the collection is not in the view, you had really a problem because this outliner 
it didn't scroll. Now it does. So if you go here to the cube, hold down your left mouse button and you go here to a border of the outline and you now see an expected behavior. The outline now scrolls like you want and you can then drag your object somewhere where you like. So if you have a collection open, you can drag it into the collection. Another really nice feature here is deleting stuff. So if you have a hierarchy and you wanted to delete something in a hierarchy, it was really some work to do. So let's do something like that. I select all of these here. And this one here is now the last one. I press Command P and make here a parent out of that. Now we have here a hierarchy. And if you now want to delete, what you can do is, I use the right mouse button to show you, you have now a delete and a delete hierarchy. So if you go here to delete, you only delete the cube, which was the parent, but all the children are still there. So this is maybe something you want. Or you can make a route mouse button click, click and delete the whole hierarchy. So really useful. You see there's a key mapping here for delete, but you also can have here delete hierarchy if you like that. So that's here. Another thing which is really useful in working for game characters, or you want to see what your computer is doing, is the statistics. So you are used to you, you work here with the status bar. You see here all the information about your scene, the Blender version, the memory, how many objects do I have, and faces and vertices and so on. And if you have selected something, you also see here what I've selected here. And if you're in edit mode, for example here, you also see how many faces you have and how many faces are selected, for example, at the moment. So this statistics is important if you have to think about poly count, but it's really small. So there are some new features for that. One new feature is you can now click with your right mouse button here on the status bar and activate and deactivate stuff which you want to see. If you have a GPU which Blender supports, you also see here GPU uh, stats. So you also can activate these if you like. But this here is a really useful thing if you really want to focus on stuff which you are really interested in. But there's more. Like I've said, really often I want to see how many faces I have selected, how many faces is an object and so on. And now you can go here into these overlay properties. And here we have now statistics. If you tick this, you now see here a statistics window popping up with all the information you need. And you have it directly in your viewport. So if you select something, you have one object of nine selected. If you go now here to the edit mode, you see like before, you can now, for example, select all your polygons here. So you now see we have six faces selected from six and so on. So these statistics here help a lot. And then you maybe want to deactivate the statistics here. Okay. If you are a developer, or you have more than one Blender version on your machine, or you want to see why your colleague has other functions than you, you maybe are interested where this build which your colleague uses comes from. And for this, we have now a new About dialog. So if you go here back to our Blender icon, we talked about that, we have here an About Blender. And if you click this now here, we have the date when the build was done, we have the hash for it, and we have the branch. So this is the master branch, so everything official. But if you have a different branch, you can now see that here directly in this dialog. Cool. Another thing which I find really useful. Do you know that the F3 button normally brings you a search field? So if you have a function which you know that's somewhere in Blender, but you don't know where, I am used to press F3. And then you have the search field. In this new search field, which you are now presented here, you see we have many new features. Let's get rid here a little bit of all these cubes. I find them a little bit distracting. And let's take a Zen. Why not? Okay, hi Zen. And now I press F3 again and you search for something. If you ever seen uh, Blender Guru, you know now we set uh, Suzanne in fire. And you know it's a quick effect. So if you start now typing quick here, you now see that you get all the quick effects, but you also see where these effects now live inside of your menus. And this is amazing cool if you want to learn 
So you see, it's in the object menu, it's in the sub menu, quick effect, and there you find this function. And if you are now want to use this function all the time, you now can make a right mouse button click, assign a shortcut, or you can add it to your quick favorites. So really useful. That's a tool which now makes sense also for learning purposes. So really nice. Then another thing which has changed in this Blender 2.9 release are UI representations of sockets in the shader nodes. So let's go here to the shaders and let's make a material for Suzanne. And now you see that this dialog here or this panel looks a little bit different and you have now to get used to two dots here. This dot here is now for keyframing. So if you click, for example, here the base color, you see this here is now a keyframe. If you want to change what in this socket is represented, you know that everything here, if you look into the shader editor are nodes, you have now to click here on this socket to get the information. And if you are used to work in the shader graph, you know that these colors have information. So for example, this yellow color means that's the color information. If you have, for example, here a gray socket, this means this is a grayscale value, which you can use. And if you have vector data, you have these bluish ones. So you can directly work here, but now it's much more obvious and streamlined that you click here now, for example, and then let's take something, a checker or whatever, and you can use that here directly. And yeah, this here is now uh, done here inside of this shader editor. What's next? Let's do something funny with Suzanne and go to the modifier. So first things first, I click here on Suzanne and press command or control three to add a subdiv modifier with a level of three to our Suzanne. Now she looks really smooth. And then we can go here into the modifiers. And here you see, this is the subdivision modifier, which I've added with the keyboard shortcut. If you have more than one modifier going on, you have a whole list. We name this, it's a stack. So let's do something else. I want to add, for example, a displace modifier here. We have a displace modifier. And let's make a texture here for this guy. And if you go here to the textures, uh, we can tell now the texture. Let's take, yeah, <laughs> noise. Uh, I think that's not nice. Clouds, yeah, this is a cloud texture. So we come back now here and you see how it looks. So let's go down with the strength a little bit. This stack here is read from the top down. So first, Blender subdivides everything and then it displaces everything. And that's the reason why we get this final result. Let's make a right mouse button click and shade it smooth. So this deck makes sense. But if you have a whole lot more modifiers, you really often have to resort them. And for this, we had here arrow keys on the modifiers to sort them. And this is not very modern. So again, really nice improvement. You now see on the right side here, this little icon. And if you click here, you can now drag this modifier around and you see it's really liquid. And now you can drag it here. And you see this deck doesn't work because first it tries to displace Suzanne, which have not enough subdivisions and then it subdivides. So really often you have to decide in which order something works. So for this, sorting here is really, really cool. Another thing which I like a lot are keyboard shortcuts. So you're used in Blender to use keyboard shortcuts, for example, like X for deleting something. Now these keyboard shortcuts are working in the modifier stack. So if you have selected here this displace modifier and you press the X key, you see it's gone directly. So make it appear again. Another thing which you can do, we've duplicated our cubes before with Shift D for duplicate. If you now go over this modifier and press Shift D, here we are, you get a duplicate of it. And the last thing, so I delete this with our new key X. If you want to apply something, we normally use, for example, for transformation apply or something like that, Control A in the viewport. Now we can apply it here. So go here first to the subdivisions, Control A. The subdivisions are baked in now. 
you see it here in the status bar, Applied Modifier Subdivisions. And if you also want to apply the displacement, then you can press Ctrl A and it's applied also here. So really cool function. And I come back here and if you take a really close look, there's one new feature here. There's a little drop down now here. It's not an arrow for sorting like in the old version. Uh, we have seen that it works like this here. If you click now here, you see a small menu and here is a shortcut if you want to make this modifier the first in the list. And another cool feature, which is more for animators is that we now can apply something as a shape key. This was doable before, but you always lost your modifiers. But now you also can save it as a shape key without losing this yeah, modifier. And this is also a new function here. Let's take a look into our annotations. So the annotations are here. You know this, you can press the D key or you can go here through the annotations. And if you go here to the annotation lines and you now make an annotation line, you see this is the line which you are used to. So you can change the color later, for example, or if you open the N key here and let's go here to view, annotations. We have here a node. I also can change the thickness later. But sometimes you want to tell another artist something. You want to say, look here or something like that. And now we have a new feature here. If you now want to draw a new line, so let's deactivate this and activate here a new layer. Should be green, for example. You now can tell your artist at the start of the line, I want to have a square. And at the end of the line, I want to have an arrow. And if you now drag here, you see, you have these nice arrows and so on. So it's a small feature, but it helps for the annotations. Last feature before we close this UI overview is the collection manager. I don't know if you ever use the collection manager. So if you want to work with the collections here, you have a collection here, you can select objects and press the M key and then you get this small collection menu where you can move something to collection. Here you can make a new collection and yeah, you can bring uh, something into the scene collection or the collection with the name collection here. But many people want to have more control about their collections and um, their relationships and so on. And so Blender brings you, if you go to edit preferences into your add-ons, a collection manager. And it's here. And if you activate this, you have some options. We have here these layers. And if you now press the M key, you have the whole collection manager. And this collection manager also has now much more new features. So maybe this is useful. And if you want to read a little bit more about the collection manager, a little reminder, if you want to know something about an add-on, go back to the add-ons here. Uh, here are some information about the add-on and how the configuration works. But here's the documentation. And we jump directly here into the collection manager and here you can read how this collection manager works. So this was the first glimpse here to the new features in the UI inside of Blender 2.9. I hope it was useful for you. You found some of uh, the features you haven't seen before. You try them. And if you have more questions about that, please let me know. My name is Helga Maus from Pixel Train. Have fun and see you next time.